In this video, I'll turn this 3D printed hook into metal by using a microwave. There's one hook missing in our bathroom where we hang our towels, so that's what I'll be making. Let's clear this up from the start. This is not a tutorial on most efficient way how to fix or make your own hook. I could have just 3D printed a hook or do some basic woodworking. But the thing is, woodworking and I bad idea. In other words, I was just looking for excuse to do another microwave metal melting video. I designed a similar looking hook and it was printed in translucid PLA. I want to embed a nut inside of the hook, so I mix some boron nitride with hot water. Then I dip the screw with a nut on it in the boron nitride water. I dried it and repeated the process a few times. The reason I did it is so I could extract the screw from the hook once the metal has been poured. To be fair, it's brass that I'll be using and it's quite soft, so maybe I didn't need to do it, but I did it anyway, just in case. Boron nitride acts like a release agent. I'll be using some cheese wax to cover the screw and the nut. And I use the cheese wax again to attach a 3D printed sprue. I chilled the wax to harden it with some compressed air. I'll be using a 6 cup mold. If you're new to this channel, I have videos where I explain microwave metal melting and kill making in detail. Links in description. The sprue was printed in vase mode and I accidentally cracked it. So I used some cheese wax to keep the sprue from falling apart. And I brushed some Vaseline into the feet so they wouldn't break off. I mix some ridiculously cheap construction plaster with sand to make my investment. And here I'm just shaking out some of those bubbles. After 1 hour and 30 minutes, I opened up the mold. I dried it in an air fryer for 1 hour and 30 minutes at 160 degrees Celsius. 
So just after eight the next day, it was yesterday when I dried the mold in the air fryer first. So now I'm gonna wrap it in foil and we'll burn it out in the microwave kiln. The reason I wrapped the mold in aluminum foil is to protect it from the microwaves. Microwaves can crack the mold if there's still some moisture in them. The microwave that's on the table is busy. I'm burning another mold in it. So that's why I'm using the microwave that's on the floor. I'm gonna do the burnout using the usual 1-6 cycle. I set the timer on my smartwatch to 3 hours and 20 minutes. That's when I'll come back and remove the foil. All right, time's up. Let's remove the foil. I'll give it half an hour more, more or less, and then I'll change the cycle to 1.4. The mold has reached 400 degrees Celsius and the camera needs glasses. I changed the cycle to 1.4 and continued burnout for a little bit longer. It's time to melt some metal. I'll be melting some scrap brass. I preheated the crucible with a blowtorch. You don't have to do it, but it's quicker this way. I microwaved the crucible for approximately 15 minutes. Most likely it didn't need to be microwaved for that long, but that's what I did. I added a bit of boric acid to help to collect the slack. I put it back in the microwave and started to prepare the mold. So just like always, I'm using my vacuum cleaner vacuum casting station. Most of times when I melt brass, I lose a lot of zinc. I was waiting for the metal to cool down so I could see the slag and remove some of it. Let's open it up and see what we got. Oh. 
I wonder if I should try to put some MIDI 40. Well, anyway, let's see. Ooh, this looks like success. <clears throat> Sh I stripped the screw, but it was turning. I think so, at least. In the past, I used stainless steel nuts and bolts, where this time it was not stainless steel. I think that was the reason why the screw got stripped, because the metal got softer. The battery died, so I switched to something more powerful. One thing I forgot to do is print the hook 3% bigger because the metal will shrink. It doesn't really matter in this case, but it is a little bit smaller than I originally planned. <laughs> 